It's a city where anything can happen. So what could go wrong or right as I hit up LA Unscripted? <laughs> Iconic landmarks, quintessential attractions, and instantly identifiable architecture. Any angle you look at it, the City of Angels is truly a work of art. Hi everyone, I'm Dana Devon and welcome to LA Unscripted. Now here's the bonus of going off script in our city. Whether it's 20 miles or 20 minutes, you're bound to bump into something old that's new to you. Like the oldest restaurant in Burbank, Chili John's. Oh, it's good. I'm Steve, I'm the owner of Chili John's, and I'm here to reveal to you one of the oldest chili recipes in America. So Chili John's is the oldest continuously operated restaurant in Burbank, California. It's been here since 1946. Walt Disney used to eat here, even before he became famous, his favorite food, in fact, was chili. Uh, another old-time Hollywood celebrity that was known to eat here was Howard Hughes. So our logo was, it was trademarked in 1902, so it's before Coca-Cola. We're the second restaurant for Chili John's. The first one opened in 1900, and prior to that, Chili John was selling his chili out of the back of a horse-drawn carriage. He also invented Chili on Spaghetti, which is a huge cultural thing in the Northeast. Chili is a preserved food. It's an oil-based food. At room temperature, it actually becomes solid. When you add water and sugar to the chili, it instantly begins to spoil. So you could keep this forever. So it's preserved and in a refrigerator or a freezer, it basically lasts indefinitely. So the cowboys used to make it and they used to roll it up into a big strip when it was becoming solid and keep it inside their bedroll in a piece of wax paper. And they used to, it'd be like a sausage and they would cut off pieces of it and they would melt that down. Is this the vat, the vat? This is the vat. Look the, at just this thing. Uh, yeah, this that, is unbelievable. Yeah, this is a 65 gallon pot. I, right now it's got about 450 pounds of meat in it. Is there a secret way to stir? Am I doing yeah. it right? Uh, this batch here is just finishing up. It, it, this is 24 hours. Yeah, we have a lot of celebrities come in here, a lot of directors and people from the movie industry come in here. We were actually in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I did recently get to meet Snoop Dogg and he liked my chili fries with Fritos on it so much he said I'm allowed to name it after him. I don't want to just make any chili cheese fries. I want to make Snoop's favorite. What What are, can you teach me? Snoop Dogg's double dizzle fries. Yeah. Snoop Dogg's double dizzle fries. Yeah. So you want to get a big handful of cheese and you want to put that all over the fries. So then you're going to want to put two scoops of that on top. Got to put Fritos, of course. Oh my God, you have What's to What's better these. than Fritos? Snoop, I'm so sorry, but I'm changing this to the Dana double dizzle chili cheese fries. All right, Dana, how am I dare for you? Do you want to try a hot sauce from the bucket of death? It's called the bucket of death. I never turned down a Dana Dare. This one though, might actually kill me. <laughs> yep, he sure did. He said bucket of death. So you'll have to stay tuned to see if I can handle the heat. All right, if you have a place you want us to order up, DM or email us at lainscripted at ktla.com. All right, from chili bowls to bikes, pedal pusher Liberty Chan hops on an e-bike to spread some healthy vibes. No, I love indoor cycling. I got Dana on a blender bike. Today, it is all about the electric bike. Here in Newport Beach, this is so fun. It's electric. Woo! People have really been motivated to get outside, do adventures, you know, and, and, and be active. They want to get out. So they don't want to get on a motorbike. They want to actually be a, bike, a cyclist, but they might be a little bit older. They might have an injury. They might be diabetic. They might not actually be strong enough to keep up with their spouse. I'm Sean Lupton Smith, and I'm the owner of the electric bike company. Not only do we build the bike here, but we allow the customer to create it. We build it according to their design. And then what's important is we actually ship the bike fully built to the customer. This is sort of reminiscent of like Santa's factory. I feel like <laughs> you have like little elves. Really, really cool area. It's all the customized colors. You can choose any color in the rainbow. So there's a, there's a website called Pantone.com and they've got over 10,000 colors. You can pick your favorite colors, anything for any part of your bike. Send us that code. We'll mix the paint to match that exact code. If you would like, we can put an anti-theft alarm system in your bike, integrated into the battery, that when somebody moves the bike, the actual alarm will get triggered. 
But when COVID came and COVID arrived, people were like, well, I want to get out of my car. I don't want to take the bus. I don't want to be on a train. I don't want to be around too many people. And I'm just not strong enough to be able to ride up these hills or it's so far to get to Laguna Beach or to get to, you know, in Florida, to get to my, you know, you're going to go to all these different places. Why, why not get on an electric bike? Pedal when you want to, cruise when you don't. There's a study that says you use an electric bike four times more than you'd use your regular bike. So you actually end up getting outside. When you, once you're on your bike, you don't feel too intimidated about going you know, 10 miles or 15 miles. If the hills are really tough, or the, you've got a headwind, or you've got a lot of cargo, or you know, you're tired, you, know, you can just choose how much you want to, to work. This is the showroom. This is where I can design my own bike. Okay, Sean, this is my dream bike. Can we, can we do this? Yes, just give me one minute. Okay. I am done with cars. This is my new mode of transportation for the new year. Okay, so e-bikes can cost anywhere from 600 to 4,000 plus dollars. Though there are some local spots, you can rent the wheels. All right, where well, our wheels are just starting to roll, coming up the spice of life at Chili John's, my hot sauce Dana Dare is straight ahead. Then football's over, so why am I still cheering? And Doug Kolk with the deets on an LA page turner to put on the top of your next reading list. LA Inscripted, let us know what you want us to feature. California reopening, COVID numbers headed in the right direction. Football season may be over, but we still have a lot to cheer about. Welcome back on Scripters. I'm Dana Devon, and we here are true cheerleaders for everything LA. So when the Rams dared me to try out for next season, I said, I can still do the splits. to become a Los Angeles Rams cheerleader. There's the cheerleader, so I'm nervous now. I'm Sammy, I am the captain of the Los Angeles Rams cheerleaders, and we're really happy to have you here with us today, leading up to our game. Well, you don't say that yet until you see how this goes, but I am so happy to be here. I cannot believe that I'm in the room with the Rams cheerleaders. Yeah. I love this. There are a few things that are every Ram cheerleader needs. Okay. First of all, mask. Oh, I need it. Oh, definitely need this. Okay. Gotta be safe. Yes. But it also color coordinated. Of okay. course, color coordinated. You, you gotta have you. the Rams Royal. Exactly. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna put um, this we away. have a shirt for you as well, so you can rep our team. Thank you so much. The most important. Oh part. my God. Yes. yes. Make sure you yes. give it a really yes. big shake. <laughs> So, Dina, have you ever been a cheerleader before? Yes, yes. Now, here's the thing. The cheerleading I did back in Texas, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, was a little mm -hmm. different than this kind of cheerleading. Were yes. there any signature moves that you had? <laughs> like a, a special go fight win? Do you know, I do, I do, I do, actually. You want me to show you? T-E-F-E-N-S-E, defense for a victory. Go, team. Oh! <laughs> that hurt. Uh, I've been with the team almost 30 years. I cheered for three way back when he, we were in Anaheim and then stayed with the team um, in the administrative role. We have such a rich history. And I think being a part of the new history with having the first male dancers on the team makes it even more personal and emotional. How does it feel to have made history as the first, one of the first male cheerleaders in the NFL? Three years later and I still get butterflies. We are a community that is also a family. We are a Ramily. One of the key parts of being a cheerleader is the tea clap, which is how we start every routine that we do on the sidelines. Okay. You guys not to be intimidated because you've already made the team. I can't take your spot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
have it. Hey. I saw a bit of what you've got. Yeah, what did you think? Um, you're going to be a great cheerleader really? in the stands. Oh, in the um, stands. Yeah, you can cheer <laughs> us on from this stands with everyone else. Maybe, maybe lead the way. Yeah, I'm in the Ramily. Yes, you're in I'm the Ramily. Didn't hurt, didn't hurt. You know, trials are held once a year, people. I may have a chance, just saying. Okay, other than the Rams, another symbol that signifies LA, the colorful street art, specifically angel wings. Now one-on-one -on -one with the iconic artist. The mayors of LA took photos, movie stars and musicians and athletes and the ballerinas from New York. I did not know that the wings would be accepted the way they were and become popular the way they were. The Global Angelus Project is a street art project I started in 2012 first. I painted them at my studio and I made them human size so that they would fit somebody as they walk along and they could lean against it and they could be wearing the wings. You know, like randomly as I drove down the 101 in like a kind of, you know, gridlock and I kept imagining huge wings on the walls of these industrial buildings. I did not sign my name on the first few because I thought I could be held accountable for graffiti. I think Los Angeles has become one of the cities on earth that has taken street art to a very respectable and global stage and the canvas on the street has become like the immediate voice of the people. It's just, if I left this earth and I, I left that statement for humanity. What you do is you walk up to the painting and you wear them or taking flight even for a second and it's to remind humanity we are the angels of this earth. All right, follow that angel on social media for sure. All right, but we're not done yet creating our LAU masterpiece. Next, back in Burbank, I'm sweating over some serious hot sauce. It's a Dana Dare coming up. Plus the LA author and musician that will play your heartstrings for sure. LA Unscripted, good for your mind, body, and soul. living life unscripted mean to you? For me, it's usually not cooking. Until Chili John's dared me to find out how hot is too hot. Hi Dana, I'm Steve, the owner of Chili John's in Burbank, California, and I dare you to try some hot sauces from the bucket of death. So Chili John's is the oldest continuously operated restaurant in Burbank, California. It's been here since 1946. So this is the original countertop built in 1946. LA County won't let you build these anymore. There's only two left. This is one of the two. Chili is basically like a sauce and you can almost put it over anything. It goes great on a tamale. It's awesome on a hot dog. Chili spaghetti is our specialty thing. A lot of the diets that are, you know, people are doing right now like ketogenic diet and things like that. The chili has no sugar in it so you can eat this chili like literally all day long. 
Okay, Dana, before we get to the spiced air, I'm gonna give this to you. You gotta taste the chili. This chili is was just completed. The first hour and the last bucket is always the two best times to try it. It's like eating a fresh donut or a fresh loaf of bread. I served it over spaghetti because that's the way Chili John would have served it. He was the first one to do chili over spaghetti, which is a huge thing in the Northeast. And those are his oyster crackers that he invented that go on. Wow. Yeah, the spices haven't actually blended yet. We have uh, what we call, we lovingly refer to as the bucket of death. It goes all the way from something like about Tabasco sauce heat level to something that's like weaponized. It's like five million Scoville. You have on hand all these hot sauces for people who love hot sauce and their chili. Yes, yeah, some people actually donate them. Some people eat, actually eat that, but when we're doing the challenge, we just do a toothpick on your tongue just so that you get the It's experience. that hot. It's that hot. We're gonna start out with Tabasco sauce, which is always a good base, which is mild. So we're just gonna start. With Tabasco sauce. Okay, just Tabasco, just for comparative sake. Okay, I love Tabasco. They're gonna move up to Dame's Ultimate Insanity, which is gonna be moderate. And that's just the medium one? That's just the medium one. That one's about a million Scoville. I've done the medium one, and it's still on fire on my tongue, and that's only a million Scoville. So this one is five million. So I dipped a toothpick, Wow, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Warning, do not consume directly. <laughs> I did it. Dana Dara completed. This is my favorite pie, lemon pie. Oh my God, I can't wait to try it. Okay, my nose is running from the hot sauce. That's incredible. It's like light and fluffy and airy. And for one minute, I forgot about my hot tongue. Delilah, thank you so much. That's why they chose it, because it's delicious. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh my God, love that pie, love that chili, I love them, I love that place. And now another spotlight on a local LA legacy, Doug Kolk has the deets. He may be in the driver's seat now, but life wasn't always full of fast cars and fancy guitars. I wrote this song in three days in my apartment. I'd run into my ex-girlfriend in a bar. In fact, one could easily argue. And she was there with this other dude, so I was really upset about it. Um, and then I came home all hungover because I'd been drunk and just like kept my doors closed and like ordered Chinese food and just wrote this song. And start. Some time around midnight. With what Mikel Jolet has endured, it's almost unimaginable to now call him a rock star. And if you want to dive deeper into his chaotic world, so this is my high school, Westchester High School. He's inviting us all on the journey. It's just like. Like the true artist he is. And it's that ba 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 da da ba 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 da da ba 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 ba. Mikel paints us a picture. The whole point is it's a galloping rhythm of a horse race. A seven three five eight one was the number they burned it in my brain. I could feel it in my veins. We could run. We could run. A picture not just through his music or his lyrics. And they were writing their names up in the sky. We would watch them as they brought the horses by. But through his memories. And I felt like I was ready to die. And pages full of them. Oh, and the bell went off and the races would start. The song he's teaching me on guitar is called Hollywood Park. At Hollywood Park. It's the title track to the latest album from the band Mikel Fronts, The Airborne Toxic Event. It's also uniquely the soundtrack to his 384-page memoir, also titled... To have the book and then the concept album accompany it, I haven't had a author take me down a creative journey like you have. Thank you. Inside the book, you'll find a story of triumph against all odds. Here was this little boy. And this little boy was born in an orphanage, raised in a cult, lived on the run, 
and you witnessed tremendous violence and you're the victim of violence and your stepfather died and you lived on rabbit, you had to slaughter yourself from the time you were seven. And this little kid just never had a voice. I was really after trying to put the reader um, into my head at that age. Your father's death is what inspired you to write? Yeah, so when my dad died, um, everything just kind of fell apart for me. And I realized my father was the first person I ever trusted and that I trusted him completely. And, and it didn't make sense to me. And so what did make sense to me was to write about it. And a crowd went out through the streets that night cause we knew we lost our home. It was always like this big blazing metaphor for me because like that's where we were. We were always at the track. We were at Hollywood Park, you know, and, I, and they tore it down three weeks after he died. And so it was just like he went there every Saturday. That's where like our big talks were when I was a kid. So I just knew like, okay, there's something here. So this is my dad's garage. This was the toolbox that he was always in. When you're writing a memoir, memory's like a string and you start to pull on it and you remember more and more. Tell me what it was like for your family reaction to seeing you play in front of thousands of fans. They loved it. Feel myself turning into my father. You know, there was this sense that like I was sort of redefining what it meant to be a man in my family a little bit. And and I think he was just so proud. He used to always say, like, all, all anyone has to do is just see you. If they can just see you live, you got a fan for life. So I don't know if that's true or not, but the fact that he thought that always, you know, meant a lot to me. He was very, very supportive. By the way, the EP read that book in one day. And what are you reading? Let us know. And that for us is the end of this chapter of LA Unscripted. You can't put us down, right? We'll see you next time.